Yes, this evening we're delighted to welcome half of the witch. I suppose if I said the better half, I'd get into trouble. No, you think the better half. You won't be in trouble with us, and they're not here. All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sinead and Adele, you're very welcome. Thanks, Thanks for joining for us this morning. Us. Oh, no, it's great. Um, congratulations on, on, on taking part in this again, because it must be great to get back out on the road. I'm sure you're looking forward to that, are you? Yes, oh, my gosh, we can't wait. Back yeah. on the road. We're on the Dublin 02 on the 16th, so we all can't right. wait. It's amazing. OK. That's the best bit of all of it, was always being on stage and performing, like, when we get to do it. Yeah. Two weeks, no pressure. Which is yeah. great. Yeah, and, amazing. Uh, and also, because the, it's been well-promoted and well-organised, you, you don't have any headaches. It's just get in, do the gig and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, and... I think then we're going to try and socialise a little bit more and hang out yeah. and really, really enjoy ourselves. We were always so we good. We went to bed all the time. <laughs> really? It was just yeah, like I don't believe that for a minute. We, we did. did. <laughs> we did. Well, whatever stories you hear this time around will probably be true. Okay, it'll, it'll be rock and roll this yeah, time. Yeah. Six, six million sales worldwide. Yeah. Very yeah. Yeah. impressive. I know. And yeah, we did well. Yeah, you did fantastically yeah. well. And uh, four songs straight in at number one. Right, yeah. In the UK, I'm four number ones, yeah, like four back to back. Like first our first debut was number one, which was completely incredible. unheard of at that yeah. point. Now it's nearly expected of people. Well, then of course you point. sell a lot less now to get into number one. Then you yeah. sell a lot more. I mean, I think like with Say La Vie, I think we sold like a hundred and seventy-five thousand in one week to get that number one. Like it was yeah. crazy the difference. Incredible. Um, just let's go back to that time and that era and putting the band together. How did the band come around in the first place? Well, <laughs> yeah. there's a few different stories. Do you stories remember at Diggs Lane? It was like the <laughs> yeah. hub of where everybody, like River Dance and Boys, everything was rehearsed and done there. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, the script, everybody yeah. used to rehearse there. And um, Kiwi and Adele were like hip hoppers, and they would do loads of street dancing mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in doing ballet, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we just met in there, and it was like kind of chalk and cheese, really, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. I mean, when you look back, actually, because Sinead would wear, like, say, like this golden skirt with white tights and. <laughs> goals like sandals myself and Kiwi would be in big orange bright pants with like a little belly top or something and it, like a little woolly hat so how we actually managed to think together that we could possibly do a band is beyond me but it was clearly meant to be because we looked beyond the styling <laughs> yeah we just went for lunch one day because yeah. I know I wanted to do a demo and they dialed it too and we went and we had lunch together and yeah. uh we were like, we went back to Diggs Lane and said, we, we sang for each other. And they were like, yeah, cool, that's grand. Yeah, and I said, oh, I have a twin, let's bring her in, bring her in. And Kiwi and I and Sinead were together for a while before we brought Lindsay in, yeah. actually. Mm. We'd done a couple of TV performances with her. Yeah, we did, yeah. And how did Lindsay then get into the band? What were they um, Yeah, well, basically, uh, Graham Cruz, who was a dancer. I remember him, yeah, Dove. Mark Sheehan. Yeah, Mark Sheehan. Yeah, yeah. Dove. Yeah. Well, they used to do hip-hop class out in choreographers went to, yeah. Lindsay's school. Yeah. So we were looking yes. for um, a fourth member, and Graham's like, you know what, I know this girl. Yeah. She plays guitar, beautiful singer, she's a great dancer, she's stunning. We're like, yeah, we meet her, and she turned up. In she turned up in a pair of tracksuit <laughs> bottoms with like a baggy yeah. t-shirt and her hair gel back. back. Like, didn't even look the part remotely, but again, we looked past all of that and went, oh yeah, I think this is our girl. It was so naive. Like, well, And what was it like then? You, you do the first single, it's, it's exciting, it's brilliant. And then you get a phone call, I presume, to say, hey, <laughs> you're number one in the UK. Shock. Yeah. Like, I remember we were actually in the studio. It was midweek we were being told that we were number one and we were in the studio with our producer. And he told us, and like my initial reaction was like, that is a really sick joke. Mm. You can't do something like that. And Lindsay actually cursed at him and ran out of the room. No, I did. That was, oh, that was you, oh, was it? Really upset? No, no I would just you? couldn't. Oh, like, so I wanted to kill him, yeah. like, I was just like, in shock. Yeah, thinking he was playing a practical joke like yeah. that as well. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Like, we were literally hoping for, I think, a top 20. Even. Right, OK. Like, we weren't remotely looking for a number one, yeah. nor were we thinking, daring to think that we would do that well, like. And w when that happens and then the big machine swings into gear, publicity, yeah. the yeah. record company, the top of the pops, and all that sort of stuff, H how do you even begin to cope with that? I'm, I'm sure, as I said some people before, you run around laughing at yourself a lot, thinking this is, Listen, this is happening. Like, the first time we were on top of the pops, we were living in half a house. Our bedroom was in the sitting room. We had to. We were actually pushing our washing down the street in a trolley. <laughs> I you know what I mean? And we were watching the rundown, and like Celine Dion and the Bee Gees were there, and I can't remember who else, but Five. all these massive names on the, t on the countdown, and we were like, surely it's not actually going to be us at the end, and we'd already recorded it. It was very unreal. Yeah. Um, and with no money. Right, okay. <laughs> so we were on top of the pops, I think, five times, and we were still pushing our trolley down the road trying to do our own washing. Like, Amazing, you know. isn't it? Because people yeah, automatically yeah. think they're on top of the pops. They're rich now. Yeah. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't start coming in but for a, a year, year or two, yeah. Afterwards. All right. And then, yeah, so it was just, um, yeah, it was just, cr it was just crazy. I think it really hit me when the record company said, we're going to now start travel t travelling to France and yeah. Australia. And that was like, oh, hang what? on a second. <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was exciting, but it was like, 
this is global. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, obviously there's a fair bit of work, but a fair bit of crack uh, as, as well. I mean, yeah, obviously yeah. you have to have that, but it, I presume it just it goes with the gig. And what, what's touring like? Oh, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. I think especially when it's we were in the States, it. because we got to do it five times over and you do three months at a time. Yeah. So it's brilliant. So you're not, when you're based in kind of Europe and kind of Australia, that it's more kind of promo and talking yeah. about yourself and then you get sick of talking about yourself. But <laughs> being on stage and then you'd go to the malls and do a signing for two hours, do a sign right, yeah. do the show on the bus with everybody yeah. and just have a laugh. And you manage to exclusively tour in the States as well. So it's all about the promotion or sorry, it's all about the performance and literally just having fun. Whereas in the UK and in the smaller territories, you have to do both. It's promo and it's touring. So you're busy all the time. So you don't get to take it in so much yeah. um, touring in the States then and you're away together for long periods of time and that can create tension because no matter how good a pal or how close you are to a sister when you're tight together for long periods of time you need a release valve how do you, I remember Tom Dunn telling me when they were out with, with um, Something Happens and they were I think they were week two into an American tour and they were doing it a lot rougher yeah. uh, they weren't as well known obviously and it's like they wanted to kill each other <laughs> yeah, and over something stupid yeah. so the yes. way somebody was sniffing even you know? I know we had very few moments like that in yeah. fairness very few yeah. but I do remember one of them specifically in the States Sinead and I do you remember when we had this yeah, massive row? We had this massive row, and I told her I was asking her to be quiet, basically. And in the in the end, I didn't ask her very nicely, and she didn't talk to me for about five days. So then I think she knocked on my door about five days later, and then I just went, "No," and shut yeah. the door under her face. Then, oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Was was mad. Like, yeah, but that's that's life, isn't it? I mean, it happens. It is you know, life, though. It's life whether you're on tour or not. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, what about the, the being on tour and, and protection from the fans and being looked after by the management company yeah, and security. minders and all that sort of stuff? We had security, but we didn't need to go crazy with it. Yeah. Our fans were... I mean, we were so girl next door. I think all our fans were very similar to us. Right. So we could, they could kind of relate to us so much. Nobody was crazy, really. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's not like we're the the boys. It, it's they're fanatical, you know. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like they want. They think they want to marry, marry them, you know. Yeah. We didn't really have that, so it was just like <laughs> we didn't. We know no one ever said anything on me as well. It was disgusting. <laughs> Do you look back at it and sort of say? Did you get enough credit? Because it's often said here, and a couple of famous sportsmen often said to me, that you really need to make it abroad before people here accept that you're actually as good That's as funny, you are. Isn't it? it is very strange. Well, they say here, begrudgery can be the national pastime. And you often hear pejorative things said about boy zone, yes. about Westlife, and, and, and you guys. And you went on to do incredible things. I mean, you were pioneers almost on the American trail because a lot of Irish bands had tried to get over there. Do you know what and I very think? few could. It's really yeah. difficult. In the music industry, if you don't have it, like an English record company, you're not going to make it that big, yeah. unfortunately. So oh, you kind of found that in the beginning when they realised you were signed to an English record company, you got a lot of hatred for that. Kind of I remember it. this specifically happening with Boyzone, but there's actually nothing you can do. Yeah, yeah. You have to be signed to the other territory yeah. to actually make it big. Well, of course, yeah. Sure. How it's going to release but and sale and distribute. We were always received very well when we came here. Yeah. We placed the points when when we were here and they yeah. loved it and yeah. an Irish audience is so hard to please. Well it that's is. the thing isn't it? Yeah. We are so hard to please. Yeah. I'm yeah. one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember like um, Ronan, I remember speaking to him ages ago and he was saying like even Dublin is always the, the last place. Yeah. It's always the hardest to sell. Yeah. It's the hardest place to have acceptance as yeah. well like, no matter what you do. So this kind of, it swings and there's probably a bit of, a bit of kind of cynicism with it like yeah, kind of a bit cynical yeah. you know as funny. well I don't like, think it's even an Irish thing but for us we wrote our music right. and we actually cracked America but very few people knew that yeah, we yeah. didn't get that credit when you should have it didn't really deserved. matter to us at the time but when you look back it's like god maybe it should have more like we sold 6 million records that we wrote so, so you know, we it weren't sounds, sounds so good when you say it. We six million <laughs> yeah. records, incredible, isn't it? Amazing, like, um, like yeah, we, were yeah. at, we were at the Ivor and Avello Awards and everything. Like we were actually nominated for an award for our writing, and that, that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Were ye old enough, mature enough to appreciate it? Looking no, back, was, I it, was it come too soon? I think so. I feel like, I mean, I'd only just come out of school. Yeah. I barely had my first job. And if I were to do it now and travel the world the way we did and be spoiled rotten the way we were, I think yeah. I would take it very, very differently. I okay. would understand it very differently. And and you're yeah. a yeah. Not I'm not as not as you're much. Right, I think, quite a bit older. I'd done college, I'd lived in yeah. London, I'd come back, and I was yeah. kind of you know right. working within the industry. So it's kind of you'd live by yourself, and you understood yeah. struggle and all. I never yeah. understood any of that. Yeah, because yeah. you know the way it, it's it's glamorous to the people looking in and the people mm -hmm. listening to the songs and the people True. reading about you and listening to you and seeing you but in, inside it's a doggy dog business yeah you, you know, should see what goes on under some of those last, outfits like <laughs> 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 but even things like publishing rights 
Uh, yeah, you know, yes, that, that yeah. can be a minefield and you can get duped very easily if you're not careful, if you don't have good people around you. Yeah, I'm sure that's happened once or twice, yeah. 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 But I think, I mean, I do remember it getting to a stage some point, some points it was like, oh, that was that line and this line, and right. not between the four of us, yeah. you know, between other people. Yeah. But yeah, I think if you're going to go into that environment, you just, from the onset, just go, you know what, if we're going to do this together, and it's three people. One, two, three, three, third, three ways. Yeah, yeah. three ways. Okay. Seems like yeah. it's more creative or something that right. way, once you get all the logistics yeah. out of the way. And, and when you look back at that, would there be regrets about the way certain things were handled? Uh, you know, in terms of the business side of it? Um, I don't live in regret. No. Yeah. But when yeah. I look back... Um, or would you learn a lesson then on, on the business side of it? Oh, yeah. God, no. I mean, massively in so many areas. Yeah. Like, we lost out on so much merchandise and fan yeah. clubs and all that kind of stuff because we didn't know any better. Yeah, because yeah. if, so, if you take it that... that Six million albums and just say a concrete base of ten dollars. Yeah, that's six hundred million dollars. So you, yeah. you know, who gets that or where does that go to? Well, unfortunately, we didn't get that much. Yeah. Like, there's no yeah. way we didn't get a patch on what you would have made the right. record company get a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and this, so when you look at the records, um, the contracts, like the breakdowns are yeah. phenomenal. Like even what they get for packaging is just way above what you need for packaging. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah. Not yeah like but the, that's all changed. You know, like there's very few people with record companies now. Right. And even if they are, I think they have to make it so much more attractive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And well, the whole business has changed, hasn't it, from yeah. then, know, then to now? Completely. It's completely different. Um, so getting back together, um, was it always going to happen, or you know, how did how did it? <laughs> <laughs> very different Today. opinions on this. Yeah. yeah. I'd always felt in her aura that this would happen one day. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I've always felt yeah. that it was going to happen at some point. It's um, been great that it has. Yes, yeah. it yeah. has. Um, and when the opportunity came our way, I was like, absolutely. You know, although it took a while for us to get to that particular yeah. point. Um, but yeah, no, I was, I was, I always felt it. And I said never. Really? Why? Never. You had um, enough. I don't know. I actually don't know. And it yeah. wasn't even about fallouts or anything. No. I just thought it was behind me. Okay. And I, I said never. And I honestly, I've learned so much this year that to not use that term anymore. Never, really, no, never, never say, say never. never. Of course really not. Like, yeah. And always look forward if you it's can. So true. So, so, what, was this the first time it was broached, or did you try and maybe put it together a while back and it just no, it didn't suit? It has times come up. Suit? Yeah, it's come over. Okay. Like a few yeah. promoters over the years have come to us and asked us, "Would you do this X, Y, and Z?" And there's been a few people within the industry trying to do something yeah. like this, but with a TV program, yeah. Um, so it just wasn't. We had was babies, the right time. you know. Yeah. They, yeah. You and Kiwi were doing your own thing. Everybody was. was Barbarella's wasn't yeah, it for a while? Yeah. yeah, remember that? Yeah. It's a good job. Yeah, yeah. Good, good remember. <laughs> good research. It's really funny because we didn't make it to so many people with Barbarella's, but yeah. now because we've, we're doing the British reunion thing, there's so many people tweeting us going, "Oh my gosh, I just bought your Barbarella album." Exactly. Yeah. Starting to hear yeah. about yeah. it, and yeah. they're loving it. So. Which is great. Which is great. Um, yeah. we, you know, and it, it's great to get a, another go at it, if you like. Yeah. Well, and that's also, I mean, it's on your terms. I would assume this time a lot more. Oh, is that fair? Be. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be very fair. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the, the tour itself, how did it start? Or, you know, the, the, the ITV TV show, who approached you? Or how, how did they get you all in the same room or how did they get you all in the same hymn yeah. sheet well ITV approached us and then all, they approached all the bands all the bands took a while to say yes and eventually said yes and got us all in a room for the first day of rehearsals and just told us what was going to happen really wasn't it yeah. and was it like the old as they say riding the bike suddenly we're all together here we are it's the old gang yeah. and let's go it just it, it really was it, it actually flowed. funny enough yeah I mean that was when it started for us the, the issues right. were on camera I think before that that we yeah. were trying to iron out things maybe that didn't even need ironing out yeah. and when so we started rehearsals Little by little, it all started making sense and piecing back together. Brilliant. There was moments where maybe yeah. one or two of us every now and again kind of thought, oh gosh, I don't know what I'm doing or yeah. where do I fit? But we were still kind of knitting back together and then the chemistry just, by the, the end of the second week was like, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great, yeah. Which, which yeah. is great. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and we're back. We have some listeners' questions and stuff and another great. few bits and pieces we'd like to talk to you, but we'll do that yeah, in just a brilliant. moment. Call Cooney.